Do you believe in demons? Have you ever seen a demon? Well, listen to my brother's testimony because we're going to hear of when he saw demons more than once in different occasions. But we're also going to be speaking about the authority that Christians have Amen. in the spiritual realm. Because remember, the Bible says that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual powers, the principalities of the air. Speaking about the spiritual demons, speaking about those evil spirits. But don't worry because the Bible says that our weapons in this warfare are mighty in God, able to bring down any high and lofty imagination. So pay attention. It's going to sound creepy. It's going to sound scary. It's all a true story. But we're going to talk about the victory that we have in Jesus. Amen. Amen. So to start it off, first I want to say is that greater is he who is in us than the one that is in the world. That's what the Bible says. And we have authority over the principalities of darkness and the rulers of the air, like my brother was sharing here. And the Bible says it. God gives us that authority through Jesus Christ. So this is going to be my testimony, a little story time that I've said that I wanted to make a video about already a few times. Uh, on two occasions of where I saw uh, evil spirits, it was a spiritual warfare, a spiritual attack against me, against my family. And well, I just want to share it with you guys. So I hope you guys will pay attention. And I hope that you guys would be edified and blessed by these testimonies because in both occasions they ended victory because we always have the victory amen, jesus amen. already won it let me tell you something as believers we never lose amen we're always going to win the weapons of the world uh the, there may be weapons formed against you but they will not prosper amen. they're going to form but they won't prosper so amen. i'm going to tell you the first time that i came in an encounter with an evil spirit with a demon that i saw physically i saw it tangibly i didn't see a shadow i didn't see a figure I saw a demon. I'll even describe it to you. I might make a little doodle of it too and show it in the in the camera. But all right. So the first time was, if I remember correctly, I was about five or six years old. And uh, my dad had just became a pastor. He had just, uh, he was had been discipled and he had just gone into ministry to pastor a church. And I was asleep in my bed. So this is how it happened. About five, six years old, asleep in my little twin size bed me and my brother would share a room and at, by this time my brother was already up and he was out of the room and I it was it must have been a Saturday because we didn't go to school and I remember we had family from out of town that's another thing they could have brought something but who knows whatever yeah, that's why you got to be careful who you let in your house that's right so we had family from out of town but I was asleep in my bed and I woke up terrified I woke up with an already feeling of terror. You felt like the presence? I felt a bad presence. I woke up like that. I woke up with a, with a terrified feeling, uh, a horrible feeling, in a horrible presence. And when I woke up, there beside me, standing right by my bed, staring at me, was a demon. It was ugly. It was hideous. Uh, I'm going to describe it to you now. He was, It was short. It was wrinkly, wrinkly, wrinkly. The skin was wrinkled. It was a beige color. And his entire body was this beige. It didn't have any type of clothing on. It was just wrinkly, wrinkled up like a like a hundred year old person's skin. Just wrinkled. And like I said, it was like a peanut butter color. And the, the shape of his head was strange. It was like a U. So the head came up like this. And then it dipped down like two big horns made out of flesh. But they weren't bone or they weren't a heart material they looked like flesh and they were covered in flesh and they went in they dipped so his head was shaped like a u he had two big black eyes uh shiny big big eyes like an alien right look kind of like like an alien like they described the aliens and no nose and a tiny little mouth and it was looking at me like just peering at like peering into my soul or something and I woke up, and when I, I'm laying down, I have my blanket. I wake up, and it's right here, boom, and I look at it. And it's about this close. It's about this close right here, peering at me, just looking at me. And I'm awake, and I'm, and in that moment, I was about five years old, but I remember my mom, she's a, a prayer warrior, and I would hear her at night praying and rebuking the devil. And when we would go to church the, the, the in the worship and in the prayer time, I would hear people rebuking the devil, and I rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. So I pulled the blanket up to about right here, oh, right over my mouth, but just my eyes were, were exposed, and I was looking at I couldn't take my eyes off of him. I didn't, like, close my eyes and want to look away. I had my eyes were locked into his eyes, and he was looking at me, and I was looking at him. And I remember started praying, and I started praying in Spanish because mm -hmm. that was the language my dad would pray in. Mm -hmm. 
So I would I started praying in Spanish and I just remember saying, Te reprendo Satanás en el nombre de Jesús. Te reprendo Satanás. And that means I rebuke yeah. you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. That's all I was saying. Te reprendo Satanás en el nombre de Jesús. Te reprendo en el nombre de Jesús. And I said it like once or twice. And this this demon vanished. Man. I'm gonna tell you how it vanished. It didn't run away. It vanished and it vanished. It looked like the static on a television. That's how it vanished. It turned into static. And you know, real quick before you keep going. I, I didn't know that, but it's it's crazy he said that because one day I was praying at church and there was a woman who was manifesting and I was from a distance and I could feel like electricity, like literally. And I didn't know that. I knew his testimony, but I didn't know that part. But when that woman was manifesting, I felt like little electricity, like static almost. And from a distance, I could feel that static that like hitting my skin. And I was just praying, uh, be free, be free in the name of Jesus, be free. And, and she was delivered. But that's crazy. You said it disappeared like static. Yeah, it disappeared like the static on a TV. And let me tell you, all evil spirits, they're real. Demons are real. The spiritual life and the spiritual realm is even more real than the physical. That's right. The spiritual realm affects the, the, the natural realm that's right. the, that we live in. So that was the first occasion. And let me tell you, though, and right when it disappeared and it vanished like static, Immediately, my dad walks in the room. He grabs something and he just walks right back out. He didn't even say nothing. He didn't even say hi to me or good morning. I guess he thought I was asleep. He just walked in and walked out. But like it vanished and literally, once it wasn't visible, my dad walks in the room like that. It was the Lord. And when he walks in, I, I say, "Hey, dad, dad." And he's like, "What?" Well, I said, "Cargame," which means carry me. Come carry me. And my dad's like, "No, get out of bed, boy." You know, <laughs> the sun was up. You know, the, 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 my room, uh, we had little sheer curtains, so the sunlight was filling the room. It wasn't dark. It was daytime. It was pro had to be like 8 a.m. already, and it was a bright, lit room. It wasn't dark, so I didn't see a shadow. I saw it very clearly. My dad walks in. I was like, carry me, Dad, carry me. And he's like, nah, nah, get up. So I literally, like, get, I stand on my bed, and I jump off my bed, and I sprint to him. And after that, I remember telling them, hey, I saw something really weird. And my dad was like, oh, okay, whatever. And I, I told my brother, too, and he was like, ah, all right. They didn't really believe me, but whatever. So I grew up, and I'm telling them. Like, they thought I was making it up, I guess, but that's really what I saw that, that time. And that's the first time I saw something. I, the first time I, was, I, I experienced, experienced a demonic encounter, like a demon was... I, I, his intentions were evil because the devil's intentions are to kill you. The Bible says he came to rob, kill, and destroy. He wasn't there to give me a message. He was there to kill me. And the Lord woke me up and to rebuke it in Jesus' name. And he gave me the victory. And, and, I, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah. So that was the first time. And it was a crazy little creature like I described it. His head was shaped like a U. He was wrinkled, 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 wrinkles everywhere. It was, it was ugly. All right. So then the second time, that was when I was like five or six. The second time, I was about 17 or 18 because I remember I had just graduated high school. And at this time, I was already learning how to play piano. I was already starting to lead worship at church and singing songs, playing piano. And when I had just started, I started learning piano at the age of 15. But one thing I knew was that I started late. So in my early years of learning piano, I would practice for hours and hours and hours and hours every day. Because I needed to catch up to my peers. I had other friends that were musicians since they were kids. So I would practice for hours and hours and hours and hours and dedicate hours of my day to practice and worship. But I would not just practice. I would really worship God. I would sing to the Lord. And I would worship the Lord and worship the Lord for hours. So I had just graduated high school. And it was about 7 a.m. My parents had woke up. And my my we have a ministry where we help people who have problems with drugs and alcohol. We have a home. So my dad, we live here now, and they're right next to us, the, the dormitories and the, the facilities right next to us. But back then, we were still living at another house, and the home was at another address. So it was about 7 a.m. I woke up. My parents woke up, and they said, we're going to go. We're going to go have Bible studies. We're going to go preach. We're going to be at the home all day. Do you want to go with us? And I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to take advantage of today, and I'm going to just practice on my piano I, I told them, I'll get up. I'm going to go to the gym. I rode my bike. I'll get there in a minute. I said, I'm going to go to the YMCA. That's where I would work out. And I said, I'm going to go there. I'm going to come back. I'll shower and then I'll practice. And I'll just practice for hours. They're like, all right, that's cool. So they leave. And I'm at home alone. And I've never been scared of the dark. I'm not scared to be by myself. I'm not scared of, of stuff like that. So I felt good. I felt good at home. So I wake up. I get out of bed. 
<clears throat> uh, my parents are gone. I grab my bike and I walk out the back door because I, I keep the front door locked. So I walk out my back door and I leave my back door unlocked so I, when I come back I can get in. I didn't have a house key. So I walk out my back door. I take my bike and I walk it through the side of my house. There's like a little, like a, a driveway. I walked out through the driveway of my house. I got on my bike and I rode my bike about four miles to the YMCA. It was about four miles away. I rode my bike all the way to the YMCA. I got, I did a little workout, lift weights. I got on my bike and I rode it back. When I come back home, I see the back door is wide open. So I'm like, dang, like, man, somebody got in. Did I not close it? What happened? I'm, my mind starts racing. Cause, and in the neighborhood that we lived in back then, it was, it was hood. It was a hood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There was still a lot of crackheads, a lot of drug addiction, all that stuff. I'm like, man, somebody must have came in. They probably saw that I left it open. So I, I put my bike up and I carefully walk in the back through the back of my house. And the back door, the back of my house was a den area with, with tile floor. So it was like a big living room where we had our couches. We had a TV. It was like our family room. And right when I open the door, uh, I hear a noise coming from the staircase because there was a staircase that went up in the back room of my house or in our den area. We had a staircase that went up and that was my sister's room upstairs. But also like a attic attic entry an entry to the attic so right when i opened the door and i take a step in what well, was already open i pushed it open more and stepped in and look side to side i hear i hear something in the staircase and i'm what i hear i'm thinking i'm hearing like a possum or i'm hearing a raccoon or something or a cat because it sounded like like an animal and it sounded like it was tussling with a bag like real loud real real loud and real like creepy so i'm like oh shoot there's probably like a possum up there or a raccoon or a cat got in so i close the door behind me and i go to the kitchen and but i still have in my mind like maybe there's somebody in here so i go to the kitchen and i grab a, a big kitchen knife <laughs> and and i call my dad right away i say hey dad i just got home from from the gym but the door was wide open so i'm gonna check around the house i don't know if someone got in i don't hear anyone but i'm gonna just go look around see if anyone got in my dad's like yeah go ahead look everywhere just so you can have peace of mind there's nobody in the house. I believe no one's in the house. Just look everywhere, you know, so you can go practice, and, you know, do what you got to do. And I'm like, all right. So I looked through all the rooms. I looked through the entire house. No fear. No fear. I have this big knife in my hand. And I'm all praying. I say, Lord, protect me. Lord, give me the my give me victory over my enemies. If there's somebody in here, don't let them kill me. Let me, let me get them first, right? Because I'm like 17, 18 years old. I'm just thinking like that. So I'm looking under the bed, and I'm looking in the closet. I look into the restroom. I look in the, under all the beds, in all the closets of the rooms, and, and nothing, nothing. So then I'm like, let me go check the staircase. I hadn't checked that yet. Let me go check the staircase and see what that was. So I walk towards the staircase. I walk back. I still have the knife in my hand, and I begin. Every step I got closer to that staircase, I became, I felt like, Terror came over me again. Fear. That it, uh, evil presence you felt like when you were a kid again? Yes. I felt terrified again, and I felt paralyzed. My body became heavy, and I couldn't even walk anymore. I couldn't take any more steps, and I felt like extremely, extremely afraid. And I'm like, oh, dang, that feels weird. And I would take a step back, and it would lighten up. And then I'd take a step forward again, and I'd feel it again. And I'm like, oh, Man, man, I just felt scared. I was like, I'm not even going to look. So I walk back to our laundry room, and our laundry room is also connected to that den. And I leave the laundry room open, the laundry door room open, and I'm getting some clean clothes to uh, take a shower. And I put the knife down on the, on, the, on the washing machine. I call my dad, and I'm like, hey, Dad, I checked the whole house. Nothing's in here. But when I try to get close to that staircase, I just can't. I can't look up there. I can't check. I just feel a lot of fear. And my dad's like, nothing's there. Just check. Nothing's there. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. So I hang up and I grab the knife again and I try again. Same thing. Nothing different. I can't get close to that staircase. I feel a super, super uh, evil presence, a very evil presence. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to believe nothing's there. So I'm not even going to look. So I didn't look. I went back to the laundry room again. I left the door open. I put the knife on the on the on the washing machine, and I'm getting my clothes and I'm grabbing some clean clothes to go take a shower. And then I hear, you know, 
something run down the stairs and jump onto the tile. And it sounded like, you know, have you ever heard your dog run kinda, inside? Kind of like. Yeah. You ever heard an animal run inside on tile? That, that you Claws, can hear like their, their little nails hitting the ground. I heard, doo, 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 and I heard the tile, and I heard, sk, 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 right? The running, like they're slipping. And when I hear that, I turn back and I look and I see this demon. There's a creature run right across the door. He just ran past. But I seen him very, very, very clearly that I can even give you a detailed description of it. It was terrifying. It was like something you see off of a, off of a, <laughs> off of a, 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 a alien movie like a chupacabras or something. And you know what's crazy? This is a little side note. Later on, I I saw there was like a thing on animal on the Animal Planet channel of uh, cryptid uh, cryptid animals like cryptozoology. Like the every state has its has its like little uh, creepy creepy monster, right? And I seen something that looked really similar to it. And I'll tell you what it looked like. What they call it, the Dover Demon. That's what it kind of looked like. When I seen that come out on on Animal Planet, I was like, "Hey, that's what I saw inside my house, man. That's what I saw that." So this one again had to be very short, no long, no taller than three feet. Its skin was a pale gray, you know, just like a pale darkish gray. Him also no hair, no fur, just skin and wrinkled. And it was hunched over, had a big head. This one, the head was round, was big. And its feet, it had three toes on its feet. And it had a claw on each toe. Kind of looked like a chicken foot. Looked like chicken feet, but thick. Like a little dinosaur feet. And and it ran, and, and that's, and it had a little tail. And it, it ran right past me. And it scared me. It terrified me. I wanted to jump back and jump on the washing machine. It ran past me. I was terrified for about five seconds. And then the Holy Spirit came, comforted me, and said, Greater is he who is in you than the one in the world. My presence is greater than that. And then I grabbed that knife. Oh, no, just follow me, right? For all the, all the people, ooh, you're in the flesh. But I grabbed that knife, and I walked out, and I had this courage that came over me. And I began to rebuke the devil. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You have no place, no right in this house. And I started rebuking the devil, rebuking every evil spirit, rebuking it in Jesus' name. And then I knew that it was not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. I put the knife down because I knew it wasn't about that. Amen. I put the knife down and then I started to challenge it. I was angry and I became angry. I became angry like I was mad that it did that. Like, why are you in my house? Right? I was mad. And I was mad that it scared me too. <clears throat> I was angry. And I was like, I rebuke you in Jesus. And I started, and I started to say, show <laughs> yourself. Show you, and I was yelling out, show yourself right now, demon. Show yourself right now, devil. In Jesus' name, I rebuke you. I curse you. I bind you. I cast you out of my house right now. In Jesus' name, I started rebuking it strongly. Man. And I felt like, like power and authority in my life. I wasn't scared. All the fear was gone. I grabbed my phone. I'm, I'm hyped. I'm pumped up. I'm, I rebuked that little demon. It didn't show its face. It didn't come out. It didn't. It didn't want. No, it didn't want the smoke, right? Like they say, it, it didn't come back out. So then I, I walk out my front door, uh, the front door of the house. I sit down on a little bench that we have, and I and I get the house phone. I didn't have a cell phone at the time. I get the house phone, wireless little house phone. I call my parents, and right when my dad answers, and then, whew, like the 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 authority kind of just whew, it went away. And I was like, hey, dad, please come home, come home right now, come back, please. Man, I saw something. I, I saw something ugly. I saw a demon. Please come home right now. Please, please. And I was, and my voice started cracking like I wanted to cry. So my dad said, "All right, calm down, calm down. I'll be right there." And he knew I was serious. He knew I was serious because I had just had that conversation before. Like I heard something, but I haven't checked. Then I called and said, "I saw something. Please come back now." So he was here giving a Bible study to the guys in the home, to the homeboys. And some of them still remember, because this was years ago, and, and some of the brothers, they're still with us in the church, and they remember that my dad's like, everybody start praying. He put everybody to start praying and interceding, start praying, rebuke the devil. Let's get into spiritual warfare. Just rebuke the devil. He didn't give them details. Just let everybody start praying. So they started praying, and then I was waiting outside for my parents in the front yard and on that little bench. I just started worshiping God. I didn't know what else to do. I started praying. I said, Holy Spirit. You're welcome in my house. You're welcome in my life. You're welcome in this place, Lord. And I just begin to pray, and I, I begin to plead the blood of Jesus. And I say, Lord, I hold fast to your promises. I hold on to your promises, to, to, to your covenant that you made with me, Lord. 
the blood of Jesus has <coughs> cleansed me from all unrighteousness, has forgiven me of sin. You know, I start repenting, asking God for forgiveness, because in that moment, <coughs> I was doing everything I, I could do to be in right standing with God, because why did this happen, right? Yeah. Why did God allow this, allow this to happen? And I see it now. The Lord allowed me to experience these things to show me that spiritual warfare is true. Because I've seen demon possessions. <clears throat> I've seen uh, demon possessions in, in church, people <clears throat> being delivered. And we have, man, me and my brother have countless stories that we could say when my dad would be preaching and a person would just begin to manifest, an evil spirit would begin to manifest inside of them. And we rebuke it in Jesus' name. The demon is cast out because of the authority that we have in Christ. And But the Lord showed me that to take serious the the spiritual warfare that we're in to yep. take serious that this is real this yep. is true yep. this is not a joke and i can say it i can testify and i'll say it to you now i've seen it with my own eyes you see my mom she has beautiful testimonies that she's seen angels <laughs> she has she's seen angels when she since she was a baby when she was older she, in other occasions she's seen angels i've seen demons and i've gone through a lot of spiritual attacks and spiritual warfare and the devil hates me. The devil hates you too. Don't let him trick you. Don't let him fool you. He's not your friend. He hates you. He came to rob, kill, and destroy. But the Bible says Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. And when you know who your enemy is, your enemy is not your neighbor. Your enemy is not the person at a workplace or a certain individual that is is maybe getting on your nerves or is against you. But your enemy... It's not a flesh and blood, but it's a spirit. It's Amen. spiritual. Amen. And we need to know that. And we need to know where to fight in the spirit, Amen. rebuking the devil, walking in right standing with God. And, you know, I, I tell people this all the time. I share these stories sometimes with the youth in our church or just with people in general. And I'll share it with you. It might sound scary. Like people say, man, I would never want to see something like that. It would trip me out. Well, you know that the Bible says that the sin of rebellion is counted like witchcraft. Witchcraft is a satanic practice. Do you know that when you're by yourself in your room and you're acting out, let's say, lustfully, I'm just going to keep it real with you, or you're watching things you're not supposed to, you're a beacon, like a flare. You're popping off a flare or you're a beacon. You're giving off your location to evil, evil things. Wow, that's crazy you use that example of a beacon. That's a good example. You're, you're, you're being a beacon to evil, evil things and evil presences and the devil won't show you that he's trying to destroy your life. He's trying to end you because he hates you. The enemy, he, he hates us. So, But you're not scared when you're doing that. You're not full of fear because you're, you're blinded by the carnality. You're blinded by your pride, your arrogance when you're acting rebelliously. And you're inviting these evil things and these evil entities and these evil spirits. You're inviting them into your space. If you're a believer and full of the Holy Spirit, they can't possess you. That's a right. Christian cannot be demon-possessed because right. the Holy Spirit will not share his temple. God will not share his temple with, with an evil spirit. But you, they can't be in close proximity to you to harass you and to lie to you and to, and to uh, uh, like uh, bully you and, and destroy you and lie to you. Oh, excuse me. So uh, I wanted to share that with you. Because people will hear these stories and they'll think like, oh, that's scary. But let me tell you, man, you're, you're, you're a being a beacon to evil things when you live carnally, when you live pridefully, when you live rebelliously, when you live disobediently. And, and I want to I share that before you keep going further because look, listen to what he's saying. And, and I want to share this real quick. When David would worship, demon, uh, Saul was being tormented by a demon, right? Man. So when David would worship, the evil spirit would leave. So my brother's the worship leader at our church. Man. And something my sister said today during service is true. God called me to preach. God called him to be a worshiper. We've been in places where there's other worship bands or worship groups. And they're worshiping and God uses them. But this is no lie. And I'm not saying this because he's my brother. This is just the truth. But when my brother steps on the piano or on the stage and begins to play the piano and sing, you literally feel the environment change. You literally feel the, the presence of God fall. Not that it wasn't there. It's just that I'm God sure. backs up some people with his anointing just a little more. That's just the way it is. You know what I'm saying? That's just the way it is. And that's not my opinion. That's just God. He does that. He has favor on some people. He doesn't have favor on other people. So the reason I'm saying this is because demons also know when you have the calling of God. Remember, but remember what he's saying. When people are... Working in lust and rebellion, they're like a beacon to the devil. Now, this is why I'm sharing this. 
Because you can be attacked by an evil spirit two ways. Either you can be attacked like he was because the devil knew what he was going to do. The demon knew what he was going to do. He was going to be used as a worshiper. The devil was trying to intimidate him. So the devil was attacking him, coming against him. But for some people, they can also be uh, harassed by a devil. But the difference is that the devil is not trying to make you in fear or harass you or scare you. But the devil's harassing you in the sense of he's pacifying you. He's pacifying you with the sin. He's pacifying you with the spirit of lust. He's pacifying you with the spirit of greed. He's pacifying you with pride. And he's not going to show himself to you because he has you right where he wants you. He has you right there in that location. So you need to learn how to make a difference between that. When the devil's coming against you, you have the authority, you have the power. Or if the devil's pacifying you with an evil practice or pride or arrogance or greed, don't let the devil pacify you. Stand up against that also. You also have the authority against amen. that. Amen, amen. Those are great points. And uh, <clears throat> to kind of conclude how, how that day ended, when I seen that demon when I was about 17, 18 years old, finally my parents get to the house. So my parents get there. And the first thing, again, like we were just talking about, the first thing my mom, she, you know, she's always tells us there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. And she's very encouraging to me and my brother as we were growing up, always ministering to us. So she, they asked me, they sat me down. And they felt the presence when they got there that there was something, that something had happened. They, they felt it too. When I called them, even over the phone, they could feel it. Because my parents, thank <clears> God, they're a man and a woman of God, very discerning of the Spirit. So... When they get there, they sit me down. We're sitting down. We pray. And, and then my parents, they look at me because it's just us two. And they're like, be honest with us. What, what happened? Were you doing something you weren't supposed to? <laughs> were, you, were you looking at something you weren't supposed to? And, and I, I was honest. I was like, oh, no, no, I just got home from the gym. I was about to start. And this was the thing. I was getting ready to shower, and I was going to start to practice. I was going to get into worship. That's what I was about to do. I said, no, I just got home from the gym. And I walked in and I and I told I recapped the story like I did with you guys, and that's what happened. Nothing. I wasn't feeling tempted. I wasn't feeling nothing. I just got home and I was gonna get into worship. That's what that's what happened. And they believed me because that was the truth. And they, they prayed over me. They, we prayed over the house, and and that's how we went about our day after that. You know, I think uh, I think we went back to the home. I rode back with them, and they we finished the day off in ministry, still serving the Lord. And uh, and that's how it happened. That was the second time I had seen a demon. So so I want to I want to share this with y'all before we close this video. Remember, a demons if they do appear, they can appear two ways, like that where they try to scare you, intimidate you to run away, or they can pacify you. They can be invisible, but they appear through an extension of something else, an evil practice, or pride, or arrogance, or greed, or the love of money. They can appear like that, but the main purpose is to try to stop you. To try to make you quit. But remember, you have the authority. My That was over 15 years ago. And my brother has the authority over those things. Yeah. And God is using them every single day. Yeah. And that experience, those experiences, just opened his eyes to the kingdom of, of darkness and to the spiritual powers. And now he's able to, to boldly, boldly worship the Lord. And to know that when he worships, and same thing for you, when you pray, when you worship God, when you humble yourself... I want you to know that the spiritual spiritual environments are shaking. Heaven Amen. is rejoicing, but the spiritual forces of evil are shaking. That's and right. they're being debilitated when you walk in faith, That's when right. you pray, when you worship. And when you live a life of repentance, you're bringing down all those just high like, and lofty imaginations that the devil mm -hmm. tries to set just up. Just like the walls of Jericho. Amen. When he shouted praise, and walls came tumbling down. When you worship and you praise Amen. God, and you get into prayer... And you love the Lord with all your heart, Amen. man. The, the you 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 make the kingdom of the devil shake and tremble, Amen. really. Amen. So I hope this testimony uh, was an eye opener to the to the spiritual realm. I hope that you increased in faith, knowing that you can have the authority, just like my brother had the authority. So if this video was a blessing, do me a favor, make sure you subscribe for weekly videos that will encourage you in your faith. And if you want to show your appreciation for this channel, you can do so by giving a super thanks. That's a feature at the bottom of this video. Those are greatly appreciated. Those are a great blessing to my life. God bless you. I'll see you soon, Lord willing. Have a blessed day.